want to bring you this week's One Tank Trip now. Today, Deja shows us the rich heritage at the Museum of Deaf History, Arts and Culture. The Museum of Deaf History, Arts and Culture is located in Olathe, Kansas, right across the street from the Kansas School for the Deaf. The goal is to educate people and immerse you into the world of a completely different language. This is a very special part of the museum. This is a model from a world-renowned deaf artist by the name of Chuck Baird. He's an iconic artist within the deaf community. He taught the community how to celebrate and preserve and cherish deaf culture and our identity as deaf people through his art. It's from the local area, he graduated from Kansas School for the Deaf right across the street. And then he just made his mark on the world. The genre is known as um, Devia, so it's D for deaf, V for view, I for image, and A for art. So it's um, art that is generated by deaf people from their experiences. And that's why when we um, do the full tour here at the museum, we touch on that and we open up that can of worms and talk about oppression and talk about the value of spoken language and the value of signed language and really there is no difference between them in terms of value. One is not more valuable than the other. As we tour the museum, we learn some mind-blowing facts about how deaf people and deaf culture have shaped all of us. For example, the light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison, who was a deaf person. That's yes, where, the, where the television came from. Do you know who invented it? It was a deaf person. The father of the internet was also one of the deaf, was a deaf person. He did not use um, sign language at all. What happens when a baseball player is up to bat? What's the umpire do? I feel like he signals, right? Right, he signals. Right. One, two, out. Right. Safe. Right. Strike. That right, one. strike. Now, who taught the umpires how to do that? During the time when pace, baseball was really at its height and becoming popular, there were a few deaf players who were pros. So then the teams had to learn how to communicate. So they came up with a signal system to use. You know, when the team's ready to make a play, what does the quarterback do first? Huddle? Come together? Right, they huddle up, right, and have their discussions. Why do you think they do that in a huddle? Because they don't want the other team to hear what they're going to do. Right. <clears throat> so, do you know who came up with that? <laughs> right, deaf, deaf people. And it was named after Paul Hubbard, who graduated from Kansas School for the Deaf. You can also learn all about the Kansas School for the Deaf. Kansas School for the Deaf actually was established before Kansas became a state, it, but it was in 1861, the same year. Right now, they do a lot of focus on academics, but back in the day, they really focused on trades on baking and furniture making and shoe making and seamstress work and printing and those kind of things so that when the students left the school, they could be gainfully employed. The Museum of Deaf History, Arts and Culture has so many fascinating facts and lessons that we could all learn and grow from. Come and learn about what's unique, about being deaf, and what contributions deaf people have made to the world. Come and learn. For One Tank Trips, Deja Jones, KSHB 41 News. Oh, I love it. It was so, so fascinating to learn all of these things that we use every day, that we see every day, that deaf people have contributed so much. And, and some of us have no idea. I know. Incredible. I know. I know. It was such a fun one take. I love the educational one takes where it's not just all about fun and entertainment. It's about really learning and immersing yeah. yourself into something different. And, and so local ties. Too. Yes. All the local ties yeah. is such a gem. And so I, I really encourage everyone to just go and, and visit and take a look and learn something new. Love that. That's a really, really good one, Deja. Thank you so much. Thank you.